welcome to BrandonVot.com, where today I'm interviewing a good friend of mine, Jared Zimmerer. Jared and I got to know each other through the Word on Fire blog before we met in person a couple times right outside of Dallas. Now the first thing you'll recognize about Jared when you meet him is that he's an extremely large man. Jared's about six foot five, 265 pounds. He's a bodybuilder, but he is also a man of extremely deep prayer. I like to describe him as a cross between Arnold Schwarzenegger and St. Augustine of Hippo, which I'm sure he'll get a kick out of. Jared is a husband, a father of four. He is also an author, a blogger, and a speaker. He travels the country speaking on topics like authentic masculinity, how to grow in virtue, and how to apply Pope John Paul II's theology of the body. His most recent book is called The Ten Commandments of Lifting Weights, and it's a primer on how to integrate spirituality into the life of developing your body and becoming healthy and strong. Uh, Jared, I uh, have admired for, for a really long time, and so I, I, this has been a long time coming. Uh, before we begin, I want to welcome you and say thank you for making the time to chat. Welcome. Absolutely, Brandon. It's my pleasure. It's so good to be here. You're a good friend of mine. I'm so happy that we've gotten to know each other over the, uh, the past several months, and uh, I'm very, very blessed to be here. Great. Now, very early on in the book, you make a somewhat startling claim. You say that the weight room is a place of sanctification. Now, how would one go about sanctifying their workout? Okay, um, well, one of my favorite saints is St. Therese of Lisieux, and a, a big part of her spirituality was sanctifying each and every moment. And so if a mother is washing dishes, she's able to sanctify that moment because that's part of her mission, that's part of her purpose in life, is to wash those dishes. Uh, just like a man you know, mowing the lawn or, or cleaning a poopy diaper or anything like that. It's all part of our mission, and in order to sanctify those, all we need to do is invite Christ and the saints into those times with us. And so just like that in the weight room, if we invite Christ, we invite that time of, of growing closer and, and really growing that relationship with Christ, it can become a sanctifying moment. Uh, and, you know, like for me, I'm a father of four. And so the time in the gym, yes, it is to help develop my own body, but it's also to develop my body so that I can carry out my mo my own mission. Uh, to be a good dad, you have to have the energy to be able to chase around four little ones. Uh, you know, to be a good husband, you have to have the energy to to have those long conversations that you need to have with your wife. Um, it's all about mission and purpose, and in order to sanctify those moments is to, to really join what you're doing in the weight room with that sanctifying moment. Now, one of the commandments that you give in the book is, Thou shalt use this time to train to be a warrior for the Queen Mother Mary, warrior of all warriors. How does Mary fit into the life of weight training? Well, Mary has been a very, very integral part of my own spirituality. Um, I never actually left the church, but there was a time whenever I was just a Sunday Catholic, and and really that was about it. I, you know, I'd knock you out if you said a word about the Pope, but uh, really, you know, growing into my own faith and making it my own, I know for for my own experience that Mary really took me to that next level of making the faith my own. And so I knew that I had to uh, integrate Marian spirituality and Marian Catholicism with the weight room. And with her being such a, a phenomenal example of giving the body for the mission God has given us uh, through the incarnation of Christ, I mean, she literally gave her body so that Christ might have one. If she didn't give her body, it's very possible that the sanctifying mission of Christ may not have occurred. Um, and so a big part of Marian spirituality is that we emulate her, we honor her. And yes, she is a warrior. You know, uh, she she is a fighter. She knew from the beginning the hardships that she was going to have to go through. And that's the same thing with us in the weight room. We know this stuff's going to be hard. It's going to hurt. There's going to be times when we want to stop, but we continue. And I believe that Mary would want us to continue as well. If we're using that time, like I said, to, to sanctify ourselves and grow closer to Christ, Mary can only see that at as a wonderful opportunity and bring us along with it. You know, one of my favorite, favorite books of all time is Lorenzo Scupoli's Spiritual Combat. It is just such a phenomenal, phenomenal work about what is really going on and the weapons that we have to, to fight in the daily battles that we, we face. 
And one of my favorite quotes of his is that he compares Mary to an empty bottle of perfume and says that no matter what, the smell and the ambiance of the perfume is still there. And that's what that's what has occurred to her in her womb. Uh, when Christ was in there, he was the perfume. He is that ambiance that the world needs for hope. But that smell, that odor, that beautifulness still stays within Mary. And so when we ask her to kind of form us again in her womb, form our bodies, we give our bodies to her, she's able to put that perfume, put that wonderful ambiance on us as well. Now your sixth command demands that we never use weight training for self-glorification. This is a temptation for anybody who enters the gym. And so how do we avoid vanity while strengthening our body? Okay. Well, one story I use quite a lot uh, in some of my public speaking. Um, one time when I was at, this is a great example of, of what uh, vanity does to the weight room. Uh, there was this guy that came in, you know, he looked a decent sized guy. Um, I was pretty, you know, decently impressed. And I saw him go over to the bench press. And I'm just kind of keeping an eye on this guy. Everywhere he goes, he's looking around, making sure everybody's checking him out. You know, he's walking around like he's Mr. Bad and uh, just making sure all the ladies are looking at him. And, and really, you could just tell he wasn't really there for a good workout. He was there to uh, people watch and have people watch him. Well, during all of this, he's doing his sets and, and finishing up his reps. He's got a decent amount of weight on there. And afterwards, he decides to uh, go un or, uh, rack, take off the weights. And he's still looking around, still checking out who's all looking at him and everything. And uh, at one point, he ends up taking all the weight off of one side of the bench press, of the ball. So what gravity kicks in. And the whole thing falls over, makes a big loud sound, and it really embarrasses the heck out of this guy. And he got everybody to look at him, but not for the right reasons, not the reasons he really wanted. you know. Uh, but I believe that that's a great uh, symbolism of, of what vanity really is. It's all about what other people are looking at us rather than realizing what's happening internally. And that's the way that you can really avoid those traps is by not worrying about what other people see. Only worry about what, what Christ sees and what you see in yourself. Um, you know, the definition of, of vanity is actually honor given to yourself based on or not based on reality or reason. In other words, it's, it's useless. Um, and so, you know, if we really want to be honored, we have to base it on our proper reason. And in order to do that, we have to know ourselves. Um, you know, so you can you can really avoid those by by focusing on your soul and, and making your prayer life a very integral part of of your time in the weight room. Well, on that note, your book, Seventh Commandment, says thou shalt pray before, during and after one lifts. And so what tips would you give on integrating prayer into the weight room? You know, one of my favorite quotes is actually from a man named Frederick Douglass. He was an escaped slave um, and really an American hero. Uh, the quote says, I prayed for 20 years but received no answer until I prayed with my legs. And so really intertwining the ability of the body and the soul to work together. And so really so a couple of tips. Um, there's three different dynamics when it comes to prayer uh, prior, during, and after you lift. And it's a very different kind of prayer even. Uh, you know, prior to, it's kind of that um, – commander's send-off speech, you know, the ability to get fired up. I always think about Gladiator when he when he's yelling and screaming and waving a sword around. That's the kind of prayer you should be looking for. And that's the kind of prayer I believe God wants men to be able to attach themselves to as well as meditative and, and the others. Um, and so the prior to is really to fire you, up, fire you up, but have God be there with you to get fired up. And then during, it's more of a conversational prayer. It's more of you know, when you're telling yourself, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to keep going. Yes, it hurts, but I'm going to keep doing what I have to do, and I'm going to do it for you, Lord. Um, that is really a conversational prayer. And then afterwards, uh, if the intensity is good enough, uh, afterwards you really shouldn't be able to think that much. Um, you know, a lot of times your mind is just completely clear. The anxieties and the worries of the day just kind of dissipate and go away. And so afterwards, you're really able to just sit in silence. And reflect upon what just happened and maybe reflect upon a station of the cross or or some other uh, uh, live of the saint or something to really just sit back and be in the presence of Christ. And finally, uh, many people watching this video might see someone like you, a very manly, deeply spiritual Catholic, maybe somebody like 
uh, Blessed John Paul II, Pier Giorgio Fersati, or maybe even our mutual friend, Father Steve Gruno, uh, all people who found a way to integrate uh, strengthening their bodies with strengthening their faith. And so what are some advice you would give for somebody just setting out on this path? Maybe some advice for somebody setting foot in a gym for the first time in years or ever. Okay. Yeah. um, On a practical level, uh, first and foremost, don't be afraid. You know, so many times uh, guys have a real issue of of thinking that they they just are going to be completely lost and it's going to be too awkward to where they're just not going to be able to do it. And yes, there is going to be those awkward moments. But it's pushing past those that really get you to that level where you start to understand what your body's capable of and what you're able to do in the weight room. Uh, secondly, diet is key. Um, I would say it's between 80 and 85 percent of any of your goals, whether you're wanting to gain mass, lose weight, uh, uh, grow in strength, grow in endurance, any of that. There's all different kinds of diet regimens in order to reach those goals. But diet is particularly important. And with the training I'm doing right now, getting ready for my my competition uh, in, a, in several months, um, I can tell you that it's also one of the hardest uh, as well. I enjoy lifting weights, but uh, you know, eating tuna for the fourth time this week uh, gets a little old. Uh, but that's also a, an ascetic nature of, of uh, lifting weights and, and living out that lifestyle. Uh, another one, too, uh, in order to really uh, grow, you have to keep intensity at a very moderate level or a high level because um, if you're not struggling, you're probably not going to improve. Um, lastly, uh, a lot of guys ask me questions about, uh, you know, the supplements or, you know, uh, when to take in carbohydrates, when to, uh, take certain things. Don't worry about that right off the bat, you know, just get started. And after a few months, once you really understand what your body's capable of, then we can really start to hone in what those, uh, what regimen might be right for your body style and, and your, your goals. Um, and then on a spiritual level, level. Uh, first and foremost, pray, 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 and pray some more. Uh, that is a must in, in the spiritual life. But uh, next is always find a patron saint. Um, like you mentioned, Pier Giorgio Frassati. He's my patron saint when it comes to all of my uh, fitness uh, routines and, and these uh, uh, apologetics and things. Um, he really emulated what I want to be, just a good man of God who expressed the gospels uh, or gospel truth purely because of who he was. Um, and lastly, always remember that you're a child of God, especially you ladies. Uh, when you're when you're in the weight room, act like it. Act like you're a child of God. Uh, you know, don't give the guys something to gawk at and to look at and distract them from uh, their lifting weights. And same for the guys. Uh, you know, don't walk around like you're just uh, Mr. Bad and, and, you know, be there humble, but also be there to work. Uh, you know, Christ would want us to lift as much as possible and push as hard as we can and really grow in strength and endurance, but do it in a humble and, and serious attitude. Excellent advice. Excellent. Well, thanks again, Jared, for uh, joining me for this chat. Uh, again, I wanted to mention Jared's book, The Ten Commandments of Lifting Weights. Uh, which I recommend to everybody, uh, man and woman alike, but especially to young men. And so if you're a young man watching this, pick up the book. Uh, If you're a mom, a grandmother, an aunt or uncle, uh, buy this book for the young person in your life. I think it'll help them uh, get on the right track, not only physically, but spiritually as well. Before we go, Jared, uh, where can people go online to find out more about you and your speaking and your writing? They go to my website, that's www.jaredzimmer, that's J-A-R-E-D-Z-I-M-M-E-R-E-R.com. Wonderful. And for more interviews, articles, book reviews, and more, check out my site, brandonvot.com. Thanks for tuning in.